But we feel that the cafes here are of, of a good quality. You can come here and see many different things, rather than it just being a stereotypical town. It's a view shared by many, that our towns are beginning to look alarmingly alike. You could be in a British high street and you look, and it'd be replicated a hundred times over throughout the UK. Individual chains, local businesses, they bring individuality. They bring a little bit of uniqueness to it, yeah. I personally would like to, if I went into one town, that I could find the local good coffee shop there. And the same when I moved on to the next town. I don't want to go and see the same brand there and the same brand there. As feelings ran high in Totnes, Costa executives embarked on a fact-finding mission. We went down and we talked to the MP and the mayor and, and the leader of the group that was, um, you know, that didn't want us to open. When they said that they were coming down en masse and they wanted to meet, you know, myself and, and, and a few other people, it was okay. You know, is, this is our time almost. This is this is the time to be able to to actually have our say and and be, have an honest conversation with them. The protesters declared that Costa would damage the essence of Totnes if they insisted on opening there. We're a local company. We employ local, we shop local. The money stays local. And that was the really, really important thing, is when big corporates come in, the money just goes out of the town. The big corporates control everything. It's almost the big brother scenario. Faced with such vigorous opposition, Costa threw in the towel. We listened, and ultimately we decided that the best thing was to not to not open um, because there was a you know real groundswell of opinion that said that they, they would rather stay with their independent coffee shops in that town, of which there were many, um, rather than have a Costa. A few Totnes residents had fought the corporate machine of Costa, and they had won. When we actually heard that they weren't coming in, it was a massive surprise. It was the first time they'd ever done that. So for us, it was a massive coup. It's not all good news for Totnes, though. Apart from the odd pop-up shop, the proposed Costa site has lain empty for nearly two years. And whilst some people oppose coffee shops, others see it as a downright advantage when the brands come to town. What's interesting now, as far as you know, estate agents are concerned, then they like to sell the idea of there's going to be a Starbucks here or there's going to be a Costa here, or indeed, actually, above all, there's going to be a Waitrose in the local community. This is a strong selling proposition as far as you know, places and property, towns and, uh, and uh, city centres are concerned. What about those small local independents in Totnes and across the country? Are they being squeezed out by the bullying power of the brands? A brand, when it comes to a town or a high street, can impact an independent. Having said that, I think it's going to hurt the independents which maybe have less of a quality offering um, to offer, and it won't impact independents who have quite a strong quality offering. There is a lot of space for all of us, from Costa and also the, the independent artisans. Um, as a whole, there are more independent artisan coffee shops in the UK than there are branded stores. So, yeah, there is a lot of space. Well, the big brands would say that, wouldn't they? But the numbers don't lie. In fact, out of 16,500 coffee shops in the UK, only 5,500 of them belong to big brands. The rest are independents. Often, independents do well precisely because they are small and they do not have the spotlight of negative media coverage that exposes the dealings of bigger companies. If a company, a brand, is doing well, if it's producing what people want, it's going to get bigger, and no one will complain about that. If it becomes complacent, lazy, you know, not doing the right thing as far as their social responsibilities are concerned, people will stop voting for that brand, and they'll lose their place pretty quickly. In recent years, the brands have been challenged over the issue of fair prices for farmers. 
As a result of consumer pressure, the branded coffee shops now buy their coffee almost exclusively from sustainable sources, paying up to 12% above the average world price for their raw coffee. Part of the reason they do this is because if one of them didn't, it would be easy for us to switch to a brand that did. One company has been affected by the power of consumer pressure more than any other. Starbucks has faced the animosity of anti-globalization rioters. It has been accused of mistreating its staff. It's even been put through the ringer for using too much water. Starbucks was in the news again in late 2012 when tax avoidance allegations hit the headlines. Starbucks has been criticised over reports that it hasn't paid any corporation tax in the UK for the last three years. Margaret Hodge, chair of the Public Accounts Committee, added fuel to the fire on the BBC's Newsnight. It's not paying fair tax. Yeah. I'm not going to buy Starbucks coffee tomorrow. I'm a, I think everybody should go and buy Costa. Some consumers did exactly what Margaret Hodge suggested and boycotted Starbucks. You walked past Starbucks at that point when the, the tax story hit and they were empty largely. And it felt right. While I understand that as any corporation is inclined to get away with paying as little tax as they possibly can, they should. We should. We, we, we're all part of this. We, we need to pay tax, whoever we are. Starbucks was forced to react. The company had not been paying corporation tax because it had been taking advantage of legal tax deductions. So technically, it wasn't making a profit in the UK. Belatedly, Starbucks has decided to waive some of those tax deductions. That means it will pay £20 million in tax over the next two years. We decided that our customers didn't need to wait for us to become profitable for us to make a contribution to the Exchequer in the UK. And that's a decision we made. We did it. Um, we did it because we listen to our customers and I think we have a history, we have a 42 year history of doing the right thing and I think we did the right thing, we're paying corporation tax today and, uh, and we feel very good about it. By the time it was able to feel very good about its tax obligations, Starbucks customers had already flocked back. Costa had seen a spike in sales immediately after the news story broke but the effect was short lived. As far as Starbucks was concerned, actually, it was a relatively small crisis. They had, a, you know, they had their bottoms smacked. But fundamentally, if you've got a strong brand and a great offer that people want, people will come back and they'll come back quickly. And the reality is, people like going into Starbucks. At Costa on Peter Street in Manchester, there's a brisk evening trade. Beth has worked for Costa for five years. She's an old hand on the late shift. Evenings are just as busy as mornings. We usually have a lot of like shoppers leaving shops, coming here, chilling with all the big bags and stuff like that. People work quite late these days, and I think that for a nice hard day at work, they do end up wanting a coffee. In the evening, customers prefer milder drinks. There's usually a lot of hot chocolates, I think and a lot of like milky coffees. So obviously they don't want something too strong in the evening because it would be like up all night. This branch of Costa with its late closing time is proving to be a hit with locals, but there is plenty of competition on this street for the coffee pound. The success of the coffee pounds has been observed and admired by the broader food service outlets. So brands like Pret, like McDonald's, have actually seen the opportunity and said, I want a piece of that. As other food outlets have improved the coffee they offer, it's meant that we now have more and more choice about where to get a decent cup of coffee. That's made life much more competitive for coffee shops. It's a Darwinian world out there. You need to keep on improving your offer, improving your brands. If you do what customers want, if you go where they're going, you succeed. If you don't, if you're stuck in history, it doesn't work and you're way off. That Darwinian world has forced Starbucks to face up to its image as a corporate leviathan. They're now trying to make their stores seem less corporate and more local. Years ago, every Starbucks virtually looked the same. And we were getting loads of customer feedback saying, we love your products, we love your partners, our baristas, but frankly, the store's a bit outdated and a bit old-fashioned. 
So we've really listened to that, and over the course of the last couple of years, we've refurbished almost half their whole estate so that we can make sure that every store is unique and places where customers can really say, yeah, this is my third place, this is where I want to go, that's my Starbucks store. While Starbucks is trying to make its cafes seem small and lovable, Costa is still expanding, and it's found a way to reach even more customers using the Costa Express vending machine. Inside every single Costa Express machine, um, we use the same coffee um, as we use in our coffee shops. So I'm just ordering up my coffee here, so I'll go for a plain cappuccino. Jim Slater and his team are about to launch a brand new Costa Express model, which takes vended coffee to a whole new level. You can just hear the gentle buzz of a coffee shop in the background there, just to bring the sense of sound into play here. You can also smell the smell of artisanal bakery products, just a little pan au chocolat. You can just smell wafting from the machine. Here again, just evoking a coffee shop and bringing those senses to life. You can have the exact same ingredients, i.e. the freshly ground Mocha Italia coffee, extracted as an espresso using fresh milk to make the same cappuccino, caffè latte americano that you have in a Costa store made by a, a barista. Here's the finished coffee, a beautiful cappuccino. Mm, lovely. Can I get a flat white, please? Yeah, of course, sir. But if the coffee really is that good from Costa's vending machines, why do we need coffee shops and specially trained baristas at all? When you come to a coffee shop, you're not just buying the coffee. That, that will be the key driver, obviously. But actually, once you've wrapped the service and the environment around it as well, that's what really makes the difference. And that seems to be the key for the coffee shops. It's not simply about the coffee. Just as Howard Schultz dreamed 25 years ago, coffee shops are as much about having somewhere to hang out as they are about decent cappuccinos. That's something the coffee shop brands are set to profit from as they roll out towards new frontiers around the world. We're in the UK, we're in Ireland, we're in Poland, we're in Cyprus, we're in Turkey and we're in the UAE. We've got more than 300 stores in China now, uh, more than 100 across the UAE over 100 in Poland, so we're spreading out across the world. Starbucks, meanwhile, is operating in 64 countries worldwide, and it is planning to continue to grow here in the UK. There's a huge demand for uh, better coffee and experiences here, uh, maybe more so than anywhere else in the world, so we'll continue to invest here, and, and that means uh, growing our store base, of course, but only in those places where uh, we think there's a real need and we'll be welcomed. For many of us, the spread of all coffee shops is welcomed because we are now officially a nation of coffee lovers. I cannot bear being somewhere and not knowing where the next good latte is coming from. It's such a delight to get off a train or get out of a car and see a Starbucks or see a Nero or see a very good independent coffee shop. It's like a little beacon of civilization. You know things are basically going to be OK when you see that. The Open University delves further into how these businesses continue to boom. Go to bbc.co.uk slash businessboomers and follow the links to the Open University, where you can also take part in our online survey. Et la jolie cloche ding ding dans mes boum Quand notre cœur fait boum Tout avec lui dit boum Et c'est l'amour qui s'éveille Boum, il chante loving bloom Au rythme de ce boum Qui redit boum à l'oreille 